Yo, what's up guys? It's Jeff and today we're going over a very important update here and that is actually iOS 13.5 beta 3. Yeah, I know that's kind of weird and you might be thinking, wait a second, Apple hasn't even finished the iOS 13.4.5 betas and of course we'll get into that in just a little bit. But before we get started with this update, I just want to let you guys know that this video is brought to you by Hawthorne. Now Hawthorne makes this awesome custom bathroom kit made just for you and it's all shipped directly to your home. Home. So go check them out via the link down below. It's some of the best bathroom products I've used in a very long time. So with that being said, let's get into this update and get it installed onto our iPhone 11 Pro Max and our iPhone SE and we'll check out what's new for both devices. Okay, so a bit of explanation here. The iOS 13.5 beta 3 update is a continuation of iOS 13.4.5. A lot of people were making fun of me quite some time ago for basically predicting iOS 13.5 would be released sometime, but the writing was kind of already on the wall with Apple's update schedule being so fast and also the necessary improvements they needed to make before iOS 14. Now with the complications in the world, Apple seems to want to skip over iOS 13.4.5 and go directly to iOS 13.5 with this update being focused around virus tracking and all of that. So this update does include a new SDK and whenever a new SDK is in introduced, Apple has to move on to another major build number. Hence, they moved away from iOS 13.4.5. So with that said, let's check out the details for this update and then get on to what's new with our iPhone 11 Pro Max and iPhone SE. Okay, so onto the finer details here, and it does look like we have a new build number that is 17F5054H. Now that H at the end of our device or our build number does indicate that this is maybe a less stable build than what we should be seeing. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind if you want to update to the beta. Now the total size for my iPhone 11 Pro Max was 261 megabytes, but for the iPhone SE, it was around 231 megabytes. For both phones, we still have the same modem firmware, so one. 0.06.00. Now let's get on to the changes. And one major one is actually something that's going to be very helpful for you guys if you are out in public. So a lot of people have been wearing masks, which basically covers half of the face. Well, if you have a device like the iPhone 11 Pro Max um, and you have a device that has face ID, that is going to be a problem. I never get my phone to uh, basically recognize me with a mask covering half of my face. But now with this iOS 13.5 update, your device will be uh, kind of recognizing you a lot better with a mask on. I do think this is going to be temporary. I don't think this is going to be um, a very permanent thing because obviously Face ID uses the full face to uh, recognize you and unlock your device. But obviously with what's going on, it's kind of troublesome for people to be pulling out their phones, not being able to use Face ID with these masks on. So Apple wanted to make that a little bit easier. So from now on in iOS 13.5 betas and then the official release, uh, Face ID will be easier to be unlocked with a face mask on. Now onto some other changes and we'll start off with the iPad Pro. In this update, it looks like the Magic Keyboard with trackpad has a lot better manual controls for the keyboard's backlight. Before the controls were just really jittery and not as smooth, but in this update, everything seems to be a lot better and a much more smooth experience when changing that setting in the settings app. Now let's move on to the iPhone SE and the iPhone SE doesn't have much that needed to be worked on as we have the same A13 Bionic chip inside as we do on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. A lot of people were saying that the iPhone SE will need special code and won't work the same as the iPhone 11, but due to both devices having the same exact code for the A13 Bionic chip, I don't think there's going to be many differences in future updates for those devices. Now there was one issue specific to the iPhone SE and that was the battery getting extremely hot when doing anything of high CPU or GPU usage. So whenever I was playing games, watching YouTube, or anything other than texting really, the phone would get really, really hot. In this update, specifically I was 13.5 beta 3, it seems like that issue is now fixed and the battery heat issue is under control. Of course, we'll get into the battery life improvements for the iPhone SE in just a bit as we go over performance. Okay, so one of the biggest changes in this update is a release of the Exposure Notification API for coronavirus. As you may have heard, Apple and Google are working on a virus tracking application that basically tracks individuals who have the virus and they want to update you on if one of those people is anywhere near you. 
So this notification API will be able to be used by developers to notify you of any potential danger and incorporate Apple's and Google's tracking data into third party developers apps. Now, Apple and Google representatives say that they are also releasing the first seeds of the exposure notification API to public health authority developers. Basically, Apple did this to ensure that they collect feedback from those developers on how to improve the API ahead of the eventual release of iOS 13.5 in mid-May. So if you're interested in this, definitely follow the Apple developer page or download the Apple developer app as there will be more information and updates there in the coming weeks. According to Apple, um, they will be doing that in the next couple of weeks. Now, with this update being focused a lot around COVID-19, there is a new toggle setting for the exposure notifications in the settings app, and that can be found in privacy, then onto health, and then onto COVID exposure notifications. You can toggle that on or off, whatever you want to do. Okay guys, so past those changes for new products like the Apple Magic Keyboard and the iPhone SE, and of course the API for exposure notifications, there's really nothing new here. Keep in mind that this is a continuation of iOS 13.4.5, and in that update, we weren't really seeing anything major as far as new features or changes. So I don't think Apple is going to totally turn that around, especially as they are fully focused on the COVID-19 tracking program. With that said though, let's move on to performance and see if anything has changed. So as far as performance goes, it looks like nothing has really changed visually as everything is just as fast and just as smooth as we saw on iOS 13.4.5 beta 2. But for the iPhone SE, I think that the battery performance has improved just a little bit over the previous update. Obviously with the battery heating up so much before that was causing poor battery life and now that issue is fixed. All of you iPhone SE owners, your new iPhone SE owners should have a better battery life throughout your day. Okay guys, so that was the iOS 13.5 beta three update for all of you. If you have any questions or comments about this update, please leave those in the comment section down below. And if you want to get the update for yourself, also check the video description for more info on that. If you guys are excited to see iOS 14 updates, that should be here in just a month or so. So don't forget to get subscribed and hit that notification bell icon so you can get updates on when that content is released. Also check out those channel memberships. Those are now live and have perks for anyone who wants to become a channel member. More information on that can be found by clicking the join button down below or checking out the link in the video description. Anyways, guys, thank you all for watching today's update and hopefully I'll be seeing you guys in future content. Until then, I hope you all have an awesome day.